Did you know that sending emails isn't always secure? Did you also know that in Microsoft 365, you can encrypt your emails for maximum protection? But in this video, I'm gonna show you how. But before we start, as always, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards. I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. My IT company helps businesses with their IT support and their cyber security. Please do me a quick favor. If you get any value from this video, please subscribe to my channel. Firstly, let's talk about encryption. What exactly is encryption? Well, encryption is when data is all scrambled up or encoded so it can't be accessed or read until it's decrypted. So when it comes to IT security, Encryption is a very good thing. Now data encryption can apply to various different scenarios, but I want to focus in today's video on encryption when it comes to sending and receiving emails in Microsoft 365. Just a little bit of history on email. Email was invented in the 1970s by a guy called Ray Tomlinson. Now when Ray invented email, he didn't do it with security or privacy in mind. Now I must say that email security has come along a little bit since the 1970s but it's still not a secure means of communication when you send an email it's a little bit like sending a letter you write the letter you put it into an envelope put someone's address on it and then you post it but you are relying on different people and different systems to deliver that letter for you you just hope that that letter ends up in the right place being read by the right person and not intercepted and read by anyone else along its journey but you can't be sure but today businesses of all sizes rely on email to deliver sensitive and private information without a second thought. So how does encryption help? Well, think of email encryption like this. You write your email and you send it as normal, but that email this time is encrypted. So it's all scrambled up and it stays encrypted throughout its journey. And it's only decrypted when it lands in the mailbox of the intended recipient. If we think back to our writing letter analogy, it's like you've wrote that letter in some kind of code. And yes, that letter might be intercepted. It might be open along the way but unless that person knows the code which is highly unlikely the contents of that letter are completely useless so how do you get started with email encryption well if you're using Microsoft 365 email encryption is free and easy and I'm going to show you exactly how it works so just hop over to my computer screen behind me and I'll show you so let's see how email encryption works within Microsoft 365 you can see I've got my Outlook open. So this is my main mailbox. I'm just going to open a new email. Now I'm going to send this to my work colleague who's called Boris Johnson. So Boris works in the same organization as I do. Just for testing, I'm also going to send the email to my Gmail account. So obviously that has been sent outside of the organization. The subject can be anything, but I'm just going to call this encrypted email and put some contents in here. This email is encrypted. So how now do I encrypt this email? Well, I go into options and you can see there's an encrypt box here. So I click on the drop down and I've got four options and we're gonna go through each of these options in turn. But we're gonna start with encrypt only. So click on there and you can see this has appeared here. Now I'm gonna send this email. Okay, let's see in Boris's mailbox now. Okay, so this email has been received. Now, the first thing to notice here, if I hover over it, it disappears. But just above the time here, there's a padlock. So that symbolizes that this email is encrypted. Now, if I'm Boris, I can double click on this email and you can see I can read all the contents. There's no problem there. It just, there's a little sign here saying this email is encrypted. But apart from that, I've not been able to tell any difference. But that email has traveled over the internet and it's been completely encrypted. So if that was intercepted, the contents of that email would be encrypted and couldn't be read. So how does it look if I'm a Gmail user? Okay, so the email is here. Now I get a slightly different sign. So I've, it says that Jonathan Edwards has sent you a protected message. Now I can click on here and you can see that it's opened up and I can read the mail. Now, usually what it would ask me to do is verify my Google credentials. That is just confirming that the person is the right person, okay? Sending the email externally to a Gmail account, no problem at all. We've been able to read it and receive it. So the next test we want to do, new email again. 
send it to Boris again, send it to the Gmail account again. Okay, we'll set this as do not forward. Do not forward. Highly confidential. So there might be times where you send an email to someone and you don't want them to forward it to anyone else. Okay, so again, we go to options, encrypt, do not forward. And then we will send this email. Okay, back to Boris's mailbox again. And we've got this email here, okay? So again, this email is also encrypted. We have built on the previous setting, so the email is encrypted, but we've also applied some more settings. Boris can read this email, but Boris can't forward it. You can see here, forwarding is grayed out. Now there's also another security setting. Boris might think, oof, I can't forward this email. I want to forward it to someone else. I know what I'll do, I'll print it off and then I'll show it to the other person. Well, Boris can't do that either because printing is also grayed out. So when you set the do not forward setting, you can't forward the email and you can't print it. Now back to the Gmail account. I'll have a look here. Okay, we've got this email too. Same setting, we've got to re-authenticate. And it says, let me see if I can forward it. No, I can't. Even Gmail can't forward and can't print it. So that setting applies whether it's internal or external. Now let's move on to the next setting. So we'll just close that down. We'll send a new email. Boris Johnson, technology man. We'll call this confidential email, shall we? This email is confidential. Okay, options, encrypt, confidential, all employees. So what do you think happens here? So we'll click on send. And we'll go to Boris's mailbox now. Okay, so Boris has this email. He's got the little padlock, so he knows it's encrypted. We've got a sign here saying the email is encrypted. Now, Boris can do pretty much whatever here. Look, we can forward it, we can reply, we can print. We can do pretty much anything with that email. Okay, so Boris is internal, remember? What does it do to Gmail accounts? Okay, go back to here. Click in here. Right, we've got this again. Okay, I want to read this. Now you can see the Gmail account, which is an external user, doesn't have permission to view that message. So Boris does. So you've sent that email, you've applied that setting. Boris can read it. Boris can do whatever he wants. But anyone outside of the organization can't view the contents. So there you have it. There's the basic email encryption for everyone who uses Microsoft 365. Now, Microsoft also offer advanced email encryption for those businesses who are using the enterprise versions of Microsoft 365. That's things like Microsoft 365 E5 or Office 365 E5. These subscriptions do cost quite a little bit more money, but you do get some advanced features like the advanced email encryption. So what else can you do with the advanced email encryption? Well, you can do things like set expiration dates on the encryption emails that you send. You can also revoke encrypted emails that you've sent. Email encryption is something that every business should be using. I hope you found this video really useful. I look forward to seeing you again soon.